Hi guys, Adam from Middles Panel Builders, and just at the end of last week, Garmin released a new software update for experimental G3X touch systems. Uh, it's version 9.21, and they got a couple of great features that we're going to show you here. Uh, so let's get into it. We're not going to cover every feature that is new in version 9.21. We'll post the change log in the description as well as the link to download it so you can view everything for yourself. Um, but we'll, we're going to cover you know, what we would call the headline features. Uh, so the first one that's big uh, that we've been looking forward to is the ability to extinguish your caution and warning lights uh, by pushing buttons. So they added to screen inputs now for uh, push buttons so that you can extinguish caution, warning, or both if you have a combination enunciator. Um, for our Sling customers, or actually for any of our customers that are, have our panel projects, we have a new uh, square push button that has warning and caution enunciators on it that we're going to be planning to use. Um, so if your panel is not already in progress, get a hold of us if you want to upgrade to that. Uh, because again, and we'll show you how it actually works later, you'll be able to extinguish those lights, even if you still have a cast message, just by pushing in on that button. The second feature is the normalization of CHT and EGT graphs. Uh, so in like the GI275 engine monitor, as well as a lot of their competitor engine monitors, uh, they've had the ability to do this. And what that basically means is, um, you know, your CHTs and EGTs across all your cylinders will be different from each other. So your bar graph, you know, will kind of have uh, some jumpiness to it. By going into normalized mode, what it does is it sets your EGTs and your CHTs at the same reference level, the same zero, if you will. And what happens is now if you have a cylinder that suddenly starts running hot or running cool, you'll be able to detect it uh, more accurately, quicker, because your resolution goes up. So instead of it being, let's say, 60 degrees per division on the graph, maybe it's 30 degrees. I don't know the exact numbers, but that's kind of the basis of it. Um, and then now minor changes will be more, more noticeable. Like, for example, if you have an exhaust valve that's burned up, your EGT will jump and you'll be able to see that more closely. Or again, if you just suddenly have a dead cylinder, uh, you'll be able to see that very quickly. So that's kind of a neat little feature. The next thing is on the, this is related to the engine stuff still, um, you can set certain parameters now to be text only. So what that means is, for example, fuel flow uh, up to this point has always been a bar graph, whether or not you have gauge ranges in there or anything like that. Now you can designate fuel flow, amperage, voltage, uh, even some temperatures to be uh, numbers only. And even if you do have alert or caution ranges on there, the number will still go yellow or go red, and you'll still get the cast message if you have it set up. Uh, but now it takes up a lot less space in your EIS bar in particular, so you can cram more information on there uh, if you don't need a bar graph. Last thing on the engine stuff is the ability to set, uh, I'll call them context aware uh, logic levels. Uh, so for example, if uh, you're on a lie combing, anything under 100 degrees of oil temperature or sometimes 125 degrees, um, you're not supposed to take off yet. So what you can actually do is set it to where if your oil temperature is less than that level, whatever it is, uh, you can, for example, set a red range on your tachometer so that you don't go above that RPM and you get alerted if you do. Um, so during ground runs and stuff, uh, it's kind of a cue for you that you're not at takeoff temperature yet. Uh, another example would be a uh, flap alert if you've exceeded VFE. So you can set an alert, um, again, a red range to come up on your flap indicator so that if you're above VFE, which in the case of like the slings is 85 knots, then your flap indicator can be all red. And then if you do extend flaps too early, then uh, you get a, a cast message that'll say flaps and then you'll know that you need to retract them or slow down. Last thing that we're gonna cover is the new ability to name um, or to have more custom names for certain EIS parameters. Uh, so for example, voltages and amperages, which is actually this particular setup um, is gonna be really nice for, this is a complex uh, RV10 setup that we're doing and this customer is using the Fly EFI system for his engine. Uh, and so what we're doing is separately monitoring battery one and two voltage, and then we're monitoring main bus and engine bus voltage independently as well. Uh, up to this point, to do that, uh, we kind of had to just use some of the generic built-in uh, labels and stuff that Garmin had on the, the G3X. But now we can use custom ones, so now I can actually name it engine bus instead of essentials bus, for example. Uh, another example would be the alternator. He has two of them, and before it was just amps one and amps two, but it wasn't really descriptive as to what it was. So now we can say alternator amps one or alternator amps two or whatever it is. Maybe you have two batteries and you're monitoring those. We have that ability now. 
Uh, this also goes for fuel levels. So the Sling High Wing has a header tank with a sensor in it. And up to this point, all we could do is just call it an auxiliary fuel tank. Now we can call it a header tank and have it make sense on the EIS display. Okay, so here we are in config mode. So we're gonna go through a couple of uh, the different new features on here. One thing I'll show you real quick is this cool little indicator. This is a new uh, warning triangle or caution triangle. So in this case, the magnetometer is not calibrated, so that's why it's giving it to us there. Uh, before this update, this would actually still be green checked and it wouldn't have that. Uh, so that's gonna be kind of a handy little uh, tool, I guess, if you wanna call it that, to diagnose different issues or just as a reminder while you're going through system checkout or something. Uh, I don't know this for sure, but I would have to imagine that the AHARS would do it if you don't calibrate that as well. This one just happened to be already calibrated when we, uh, when we did this. Uh, another thing is I don't have the servos on right now, uh, but they did add, and I'm not sure if it was this update or the last one, but there's also some nice diagnostic features in here for like trim inputs and stuff that they didn't used to have. So that's pretty handy as well. Uh, we'll come back out to here. So let's go over some of your engine information real quick. So we'll go engine and airframe. The first one is you can see that I've got fuel gallons per hour as a text only because there's no um, bar graphs below it. So the way that I did that is if we go to fuel flow, this is our new option EIS display, text only, which I just clicked or normal or hide. That's what normal looks like. And that's the new text only. Now we'll talk about the context-based alerts. So we'll come up to oil temperature here to set this up as an example. So we'll come to make a new gauge marking. We'll open this and we will go to invisible range. So this invisible range is going to be how we set our logic level. It will not show up on the gauge. So I'm going to set between 80 and 120 degrees. And we're going to say set logic signal of number one. So when the oil temperature readout is in this range, logic signal number one will be set or will be high uh, is another way to think about it. So we'll save that and we'll save that. Now we'll come down to RPM and we will open up a new gauge marking. And as it sits right now, I have a red range plus alert from 27 to 3500 RPM because that would be over speeding the engine. Now though, what I can do is I can make a new red plus alert and I can go from say 2000 to 2500 RPM. I can go mode require logic signal set. Now we have signal one. So what that means is if signal one is not set or is not high as it were, this will not happen. And then we'll save that. So why is that useful? Well, let's say that you want to make sure that you don't uh, push too much throttle in while your engine's still warming up, right? So your oil temperature is below um, you know, 120 degrees in this case. Then if we move that, that red range out, that'll make sure or help make sure that you don't do that. Another example, on Rotax, uh, 5800 RPM is the max takeoff, but 5500 RPM is the max continuous. We can set timer-based alerts so that um, from 55 to 5800 RPM, if you're in there for more than five minutes, which is what the rating is, it'll go red plus alert to let you know you need to slow your engine down. Uh, so then you'd save that and that's it. I'm gonna cancel for now because uh, we'll let the customer decide on this one. Uh, one other thing regarding those logic signals is we can actually go here and we can set airspeed or altitude thresholds for that. Airspeed threshold is the flap example I gave earlier. So you wouldn't want this logic signal to set if my airspeed is below VFE of, for example, 85 knots. So that's where you could do that. Or you could set different temperature ratings or something or power ratings based on your altitude. Also, you have some hysteresis options here. So you can say that this signal or the, the condition that drives the signal should be set for five seconds, let's say, before the signal will actually change. Or you can say that the condition needs to go away for, say, five seconds before the signal uh, can change. Uh, so that's it for that. Uh, real quick on the enunciators, this is another new option here. Uh, what these are for, I don't personally think most people are going to deal with these much, but what they do is alert flash. Uh, so what will happen is if you get a warning light that would be a flashing indication, like oil pressure would be an example, then uh, you can enable or disable this light from flashing. Alert persist, uh, what this will do is if you disable that, 
then if you do get a flashing red over here, then when you touch the cast area, it'll stop this from flashing. I don't personally like this one that much though, because this effectively defeats the purpose of, or it defeats the caution from working at all as a discrete um, alert, as an LED alert. So uh, I, I would leave this enabled if it was me. Uh, this here, this test button is the same as the test button that we've had available to us in the system information page. You hold it, the lights turn on to let you know that they're working. Here's the discrete page on this aircraft. We've got discrete three and four set up for these uh, master caution and warning resets. So if I actually push the caution button here, you can see that it says reset. And if I let go, it goes inactive. To set it, it's like any other discrete input. You have an active high or an active low, and you just set the function. So caution reset, and then enunciator reset. What that's gonna do is if you have a combined button, so let's say that both of these weren't here, and this one was a caution or warning enunciator. When I push that, it would clear caution and warning events, not one or the other like we currently have it set. While we're in here, we'll go over a couple other little things they added. This user timer uh, discrete input here triggers the start and stop of the internal timer on the screen. So if you had a stick button you wanted to dedicate to that, that's what that could be useful for. Additionally, up here we have this event marker option. Uh, what that will do is if you trigger this discrete input on the SD card flight log, it will turn, it'll turn a flag on on a line on that CSV file so that it's easier to find a certain event. So if you have a high EGT or something, you hit that event marker, you can come back to the file and get to that point quickly. One last thing over here that I'll show you real quick is the ability to rename the voltage and amperage and uh, fuel inputs. So in this case, I've got a few different, a few different uh, volt inputs and a couple of different ammeter inputs. So we'll come to shunt one, and you can see that not only do I have it as a text only, but I've also got the gauge name as custom, which is alternator one amps. Before this, my only options would have been amps one or amps two, but it's not exactly descriptive of what that means. Could be battery, could be alternator. Uh, same thing for voltage here, I got custom volts too. Before I had to set this as an essentials bus of volts, but now that we have this ability, I can name it engine bus volts. Okay, so here we are back at pilot mode. Right now we've got a master caution and a master warning. So what we can do here is just simply push the button and extinguish the lights. Now, here's what's cool. I'm going to induce another master warning. I'm gonna turn off my EFIS backup switch. Now a new master warning has come up saying arm backup, and now I have my red warning light again. So now, even if you extinguish this light, if you get additional alerts that come up, that light will re-illuminate. So the, the benefit to this is if you are flying and you do have an event that causes these things to come on, when you extinguish them, now if you have new events, these will light back up to alert you that there's additional problems. In the previous configuration where it doesn't do that, if you have more alerts coming up here and you're not paying attention to that, you may not realize that you have more issues. Uh, one example might be, let's say you had an alternator failure. Okay, so alt fail comes up and uh, you know that's a, a yellow light or a red light or whatever. Well, you're flying along trying to find a place to land and now your voltage is getting low and you get another alert for that. Maybe you don't catch that voltage alert because your mind is elsewhere trying to find a place to land. So now you'll get that alert saying, oh, voltage is low, I really need to land now. So now what do you do if you don't have these buttons? Maybe you just have LEDs or maybe you have nothing at all and you wanna add some of that. Uh, well, if you already have LEDs for caution and warning and you don't wanna cut your panel, um, just a simple push button will work. All it needs is a ground on one end and the signal wire to go to uh, either the GAD27 or GEA24 on the other end and you can take advantage of this. Um, if you don't have anything and you do want to put something in, uh, like I was saying, we have uh, little square uh, push buttons with dual card enunciators on them that uh, we're gonna start using on most of our projects, especially in the slings. Uh, but it's very simple to add this functionality. One more thing that they did on pilot mode that's kind of neat is uh, anybody that's been doing their 40 hour fly off knows that there's that breadcrumb trail that probably shows 40,000 patterns at a certain airport from all the takeoffs and landings you're doing. Uh, you can actually set those now so that instead of hiding them completely, uh, you can do either uh, current uh, flight or within a certain amount of time. So if we go menu and set up map and come to the line option here, the track log display time, you can say current day or current flight. Now this one doesn't have a track log yet, obviously, because it hasn't flown. Uh, but like I said, if you have a full page of breadcrumbs, then now you can just get your current flights track. 
Thanks for watching this brief overview of the new features in version 9.21 for the G3X. Again, we only covered some of the headline items. There's a lot more to this update that could be useful to you. So again, check the description for the change log and the uh, download link to this update so you can see more. If you have any questions about this update or about anything else regarding the G3X, feel free to leave a comment and uh, we'll be happy to answer you there. Uh, please subscribe to get notified of future videos like this. Make sure to ring the notification bell as well as sometimes subscribing is not enough. Uh, if you can also contact us through our normal channels, uh, through our phone or through our email. Uh, the links will be on screen for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.